Hello and welcome to Gaming Friday here on Off The Shelf Reviews. I'm Gary. And I'm Jeff. And today we are taking a look at Doom, which oh, came out 2016. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this wasn't originally just called Doom. This was supposed to be Doom 4, or technically is the fourth installment in a franchise which got its start back in 1993 uh yeah yeah will be mm -hmm. uh so yeah this is the fourth iteration uh currently i have not spent that much time playing it but mm -hmm. jeff you have how is it straight off the bat brilliant it's fucking brilliant gary it is uh what a first person shooter that is doom that has the doom title should be that, that's all i can really say uh the the uh Doom, the third Doom in the series went to more to a sort of survival horror that kind yes, of yep. feel. Well, the first Doom when it came out, it's significant in the fact that it was influential in creating a gaming subculture. Yeah, its software created the genre of first-person shooters. I mean, it's not I wasn't the first. I mean, uh, no, Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein was one of the others that was up there. and was, was before Doom, yeah. And then, of course, you also have uh, Duke Nukem 3D around that time. As sort of being the three sort of benchmark titles for first-person shooters and pretty much establishing that genre, which has never, ever left the <laughs> gaming industry. Yeah, I would say that Doom, Duke Nukem 3D rode on the coattails of Doom's success. Doom was the one that made you go. It had 3D oh graphics. Oh my fucking god, this is incredible! <laughs> it had it had the 3D graphics. It had more of an adult theme to it. Uh, it also had multiplayer. It also had beefing sound as well. That was the other thing. Is it just a, a great MIDI soundtrack? <laughs> yeah. It, well, it's, it it wasn't just that. It was like you would shoot the shotgun and it was a beefy, bassy sound. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was satisfying yeah there was a, it, they assaulted your senses on every level and it was a level that had never been gone to before at that time in the 90s you know this was revolutionary yeah, yeah. like i remember going to my mate's house he had surround sound and he had like a kind of subwoofer type thing and he put doom on and you've got the atmospheric sounds of the demons like you know growling at you and all that sort of thing and the bassiness of the shotgun blast made it feel so real of and you course. were like this is this is unbelievable this is, you could see a real vision for the future where you could play as a character looking through the eyes of that character and yeah i mean at the time there was nothing that looked as graphically as good and it was accessible to everybody because it was shareware. I don't know if Absolutely, anybody remembers yeah. shareware, but you used to be able to play the first like seven levels of it for nothing. And then, of course, but there was also DLCs and expansions for it. I mean, yeah, we're yeah. talking like the early 90s here. Yeah, yeah. And this game had all of this support, all of this extra content that was created. And, of course, there was no surprise that Doom got a follow-up the following year. But then it would be quite... It would almost be ten years between Doom 2 and Doom 3. And Doom 3 yeah. obviously came out in 2004. It was a huge departure from the previous two Doom installments in the fact that it's more of a survival horror first-person yeah. shooter. It is. Whereas the, first pre the previous Dooms were a lot more fast-paced and action-orientated. You meant to pick your way through Doom 3 carefully, being you know shitting yourself from all the jump scares as demons jump out of you from dark corners it or was, ambush you it was the fact that you had to use the flashlight in order to see round corners then switch your flashlight off yeah. or switch it out for another weapon so you could see and of course of course until there was eventually the duct tape mod which let you duct tape the flashlight to every weapon you had yeah which kind of took away the horror element to it and kind of gave it back to so it's horror it's action roots if you will but straight away doom the 2016 well, just, version. Well, just before we jump to the 2016 version, just one last thing I want to say about Doom 3 was that when it came out, it pushed the envelope in terms of what was required for computer graphics at the time. Yeah. Because the game didn't originally come out on consoles. They said it cannot come out on current generation consoles. Yeah. They can't handle it. Yeah, yeah. And so when it came out on PC, it was a case of you need a new graphics card. You need all of these extra things to upgrade your computer in order yeah. to play it. Yeah. It was a benchmark. That, um, that is id software though you know they had a reputation for pushing the envelope when it came to graphical fidelity 
on first person shooters. They were the leader. That people looked to them to be like, right, take us into the next generation. And they did it with Quake, you know, like Quake and Quake 2 were three dimensional shooters, again, like pushing the envelope of graphical fidelity and what you could do with 3D modeling. Um, and they tried to do that with Doom 3, you know, like they, they definitely, like the number of polygons, the quality of the models were extremely high quality. But they've, you know, it's gone back to doing that again on this. Now they might, Most not, be, definitely, they yeah. might not be pushing the envelope in terms of um, highest polygon counts because what they wanted was a really smooth running game that was a bit more accessible could run on consoles yeah but they have gone absolutely to town if i have a look around you know on all the effects so we can say right now that you are running this at ultra high um yeah. graphics options yeah yeah yep. i'm running on a 290 uh, not not the X version, just the 290 AMD, okay. and it's optimized well enough that I can have everything on an ultra, and the frame rate is smooth enough that I'm very happy with it. It does look very nice graphically. It looks very nice, but the road. I'm um, just before we actually get to the the rest of the discussion about this game, I just want to talk about the road to this game's release because yeah. obviously Doom 3 came out 2004. We're now 2016, mm -hmm. and this game has gone through development hell. Okay, now. This game was first sort of announced back in 2004. Once Doom 3 had shipped, they were like, yes, we are working on a Doom 4. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. And it, was, it wasn't then until almost 2011 that any sort of information came out regarding Doom 4. Everyone was like, well, where is it? What happened to it? And the makers of the game didn't know what to make next because of the successes of the Call of Duty games yeah. and the Battlefield franchise that came out, yeah. the very next Doom game was 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 said to be very, very cinematic yeah. with a lot of emphasis on story and cinematic moments mm -hmm. very reminiscent of Call of Duty mm -hmm. and Battlefield style sort of Levolution. Yeah. <laughs> and and so and it was about story and character and the, you know, and then another team looked at it and went what the fuck? <laughs> what this the is hell Doom. Is this shit? What have you done? Yeah, what have, yeah. And they were like, "Well, you know, we, Doom Three came out so long ago, and so Doom originally came out so long ago. Our Doom's original fan base is a much older generation now. Yes. Are they even still gamers? And so, could a new Doom game establish itself, you know, to a new audience? And so yeah. the game makers were like, "Let's make it Call of Duty and Battlefield like yeah, Call of Doom." Yeah. And then. Obviously, in 2011, they sort of looked at that and went, no, this doesn't work. And the whole thing was scrapped and rebuilt up from scratch yet again with a much more push-forward combat emphasis, Yeah, which is what we have now, which is, again, the return back to the fast-paced action. Yeah. And very little story, as we saw in the introduction. You kind of wow. wake up in on a slab and you're killing monsters within seconds. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it, it, where did the story go? They in, gutted it completely. Interestingly, though, <laughs> interestingly enough, there is a lot of story in this Doom, but the way that they interact with you it, as the Doom guy, Doom guy's not interested in fucking any of it. He just no. wants to. He just he hates the UAC because they're a bunch of fuck ups and they keep releasing demons from hell into Mars, and he hates demons even more than he hates the UAC so you are introduced to a lot of characters and if I press tab here I can go into like uh, there's uh, there's arsenal upgrades there's suit upgrades and then there is a codex in which there is actually quite a lot of lore and story um, and it's all presented to you you can pick up data pads off the floor and that will break uh, very similar to Doom 3 entries. Yeah. yeah yeah but of course none of that interrupts your gameplay and you that interact with that first and foremost important yeah, yeah like do like doom guy isn't interested in any of it you can take notice of it on the sideline and it'll allow you to like learn the story as and when you want it you get talked to by various different characters like the samuel hayden um, you know this crazy fucking bitch that you end up chasing halfway through the game. You chase her through the game, and she's like, "What the fuck is her problem? 
If you want to know that the answers to that question, they're all there for you. But you know, uh, and they and they'll say, say you like Samuel Hayden, right? You only see Samuel Hayden as a big gigantic fucking robot. You're like, who who is Samuel Hayden? But there are like you'll you'll come across a room, say, in the uh, facility where they've got all oh, oh, here's all our star employees at UAC. There's Samuel Hayden. You can see Samuel Hayden's face, so you know Samuel Hayden isn't just an AI. He is actually a person who clearly is able to either use a robot avatar or something like that. So there you go. See, I got my so first, has first the codex so it, I mean I, I always talk about collectibles and fucking hidden how, objects, and this game does it. have a plethora of hidden sort of bobblehead type items hidden throughout the game. Uh, it's of course a Bethesda game. Yeah. And uh, so. But how much? How much has it given you extra? These these data pads, these background informations. I mean, it is optional. The game is about running, gunning, and shooting. But how rich is the lore? You, you say there's a lot of it, but how rich is it? Is it detailed? Is it interesting actually for you to stop and gander at? Yes, <laughs> it is actually quite an interesting read, and there's a surprising amount of detail in there. Uh, yeah, it, it's. All you could want, really. <laughs> I mean, how okay. how complicated would do, would you want something like this to get? Probably I mean, I don't want to have to read a novel alongside. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's just about enough to answer your main question. Okay, I would so say. what is the actual story of the game? If if other than finding data pads and listening to what's going on in the world, UAC obviously releasing more demons. Is it a case of kill all the demons, uh, game over? Um, it's a case of. Um, Oh, well, the, I have not yet got to the end, so is it kill all the demons game over? That I don't know, couldn't tell you. What it is definitely. Hey, if I could die because I've run out of ammo. Um, what it definitely is a case of is that there is ardent energy, that's all we really know, and there's a, a sort of a pathway or a, a seam of it in Mars, and this seam has been exploited by the UAC. The UAC is a large corporation which has the resources and, and organization to be able to exploit ardent energy to fulfill Earth's energy needs. So that's obviously the reason why they've even gambled with this kind of potential of unleashing the hordes of hell. Yeah. Uh, so Sam, are they Samuel the hordes Hayden. of hell in the biblical sense and yet again or are they just from a parallel dimension or are they just a science experiment uh, a la Doom the movie? Well I mean <laughs> I, obviously I mean you start going into Dante's inferno concept of hell and that's not really the biblical sense of hell so I think all, all this idea of hell is just really like a mythical idea of hell yeah, uh, and demons but you know, because obviously the the monster design for Doom is is long well established. You know, of course we have the imps, we've got the pinkies, we've got the caca demons, yeah, you know, the cyber the demons, knights, the hell knights. The, yeah, of course, it, yeah. yeah. So all of this is just a setup for to reintroduce those monsters, and they've got all of them. You know, so yeah. all the ones you're familiar with, if you love Doom. They all here, come back again. And they've all been lovingly remodeled to just look like really super sexy, cool, badass, three-dimensional, proper three-dimensional versions of the the demons that you know and love. So, yeah. Or know and hate, I should say. Well, in terms of just closing out on the story, I think John Carmack actually put it best when he said that the story uh, in Doom is like story in a porno. <laughs> you know, you kind of expect it. But it's not what you came for. Exactly. Giggity. Yeah. Giggity. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, yeah, and and, I, and they have treated this game with that kind of approach, and it really works. They hit that balance perfectly. They're giving you the the gore, the the death porn <laughs> yeah. of, of killing these, uh, you know, like these these monsters. And this is the main thing. Like, really, Doom is brilliantly paced that's the main thing about it is it's designed to keep you uh moving forward like you say they've got this dynamic about it so you can constantly kind of get access to ammo and health so you can keep the challenge going now how does this relate to the difficulty levels because you're currently playing at super difficult level <clears throat> um no this is two away from the top okay uh, this is hurt me plenty which is as hard as they'll let you play on your first playthrough okay um, now, obviously, like 
your ability to kill goes increases as you unlock various different features. Now, how uh, does the un perks. I mean, you've mentioned the unlocks and upgrades, which is a very Call of Duty esque thing. Yes. How does that translate in in Doom when you know the weapons pretty much should do exactly what they say on the tin? We're kind of used to these weapons. Why do these ones need upgrades? Yeah, I mean they they don't need it, but I mean for perhaps an audience that is used to Call of Duty and expects to be able to have a little more variation to in feel the way like they a, a reward system of some kind. Yeah, they've they've made the guns just a bit more interesting. I would say, um, like the way that this. The, I'll, I'll show you. I'll tell you what I'll show you. Right. So the way you um, you are dying quite a lot here, Jeff. Yeah, I've died quite, <laughs> quite a few of this, but you can't. You have to give it 100% concentration, otherwise you end up getting murked at the harder levels. Of course. <clears throat> but if I go into my game that I have actually used, yeah, like the I showed you the intro there because it was just brilliantly paced. It showed you the Doom Marine waking up from this box. Yeah. It introduces you to the two main characters, Samuel Hayden and Olivia. I forget her last name. It's an they, interesting last name. They, they, I, yeah, they, they wake you up and you're just instantly like, oh fuck, here we go again. But you've been trapped off. I guess that was like in correspondence with the law of three. But yeah, so if I go to here and I say get out my shotgun, and now I go to my tab thing here, so you can see I've got explosive shot and charged burst, and there's various different things around which will allow you to pick up upgrades. So I haven't got the second upgrade on my heavy machine gun here, but I've got the upgrade for micro missiles. And then you can pick up various different um, like places where you can pick up weapon upgrade tokens and you also get those tokens for completing certain challenges on the level so if I go on to this level you can see there's three challenges here completing each one of these will get you another weapon upgrade token okay that's quite an interesting system it's kind of formulaic of, of its type but yeah it kind of it may it at least makes finding things or replaying the missions gives you something else to aim for yeah and it makes these a little more interesting so if I get if I've got my micro missiles out um, and I've got my get my heavy machine gun out my heavy machine gun fires in this standard sort of way but if I now hold the right mouse button um, yeah and make sure I've got the mod equipped okay there, there go. it goes right so then I get a rack of six missiles come up and I can just go bam 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 and they, Very they nice. blow up and as you can see it uses the ammo to a pop of my uh, machine gun okay so that uh, that is very like it's just useful you know like when you run out of ammo of your rocket launcher and you're like oh my god i got no rockets what do i go and use then oh yeah i've got a heavy machine gun and i can get out these there's one guns. thing i absolutely do like <laughs> about this game is the fact that you can hold all of these weapons you're not limited <laughs> to one on your backpack and one in your hands no you can hold a phenomenal amount of weapons so like second uh, you know, all of the classic weapons gun, yeah a, a double barrel shotgun there's this which is a gorse cannon which also yep kicks you back <laughs> if you're in the air don't try jumping and shooting with this unless you're going forwards i've shot myself off a cliff a few times with that one <laughs> um now what is that just gun. down there jeff i'm pretty sure i can see something i can and this BFG is where prime I'm lab at. yeah oh, baby so the, yeah. as you can see that there's a bfg there as well so yeah it's brilliantly placed they, they introduce you to oh yeah. So I have to ask you, how are the levels in this game? What, how's the level design? Like because it. the the previous two, you know, the original Doom games were highly praised for fantastic level design, mm. uh, levels that were kind of labyrinth in, in nature, that you were kind of end up running over the same areas trying to find secret doors and yeah. extra ammo and health packs. So I can show you the map here, look. This is the map of this level, of which I'm sort of in a fair, you know, kind of fair like distance through it yeah but as you can see yeah it's pretty labyrinthian and there are secrets and collectibles that are not yet orange because i've missed them uh so you know some of the secrets i've i've walked past them because i've been like how the fuck do i get in there and just for the sake of getting through the map and going on with the game i've been like i couldn't, couldn't figure it out you know so usually i'll get to the end of the level and i've maybe got like one or two secrets and there's 
six or seven of them. So there's plenty there for the secret hunters. There really is. And there's collectibles, um, which, like, there's also um, challenges, things like that. Some of the challenges are locked behind secrets. So you've got to find your way into a room and then you can do a challenge which will again upgrade your doom marine in some form like might make glory kills happen quicker or something like that uh, so yeah the level design is as, as as good as id has ever made it i would say you know like they they really demonstrate a high quality of thought in keeping things going and press pursuing forward for sure. Now, how does the level design translate into the multiplayer? Ooh. Okay, so multiplayer, I haven't really played very much multiplayer. Look now, at this mother. Critically, the game has been size given of it. its kind of flack for the multiplayer, and yeah. it is kind of the it is kind of a tried and tested Quake style arena style shooter yet again. <laughs> you, Wow. <laughs> That's I, what a BFG I do like the BFG. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a BFG should do. Of course, it has limited ammo, but does a crazy, crazy amount of damage. Yes. Probably best reserved for cyber demons and boss battles. Yeah. BFG 9000, a weapon of massive power that's accessed by pressing T. And use it to devastate your enemies. So, oh, you actually have to press T to get out of the BFG, so they don't make you reach across to 9. 8 gets out the chain gun, and then T gets out the BFG. Now, do we also have a chainsaw? Because chains, you cannot have a Doom game without they, a chainsaw. They give you this chainsaw really early, and the chainsaw kills are fucking brilliant. They really are satisfying. Like, the damage modelling and the gore modelling in this is... It's brilliant. It is really second to none. Anyway, I won't, I won't, won't give too much away. Uh, that and into the game. Multiplayer. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the multiplayer is, um, from what I played from the beta, it is basically Quake with a Doom skin. Yeah. Um, but it's not as quick as Quake. And they've they've given this Call of Duty style thing where you get access to. Uh, two weapons straight away, and you are carrying two weapons. Oh, snap map mode, and you are carrying two weapons uh, right from the get go. You would, like choose your loadout essentially. So, uh, and so the multiplayer works with the fact that it has preset weapons and power ups on the level in the same spot every time. Yeah, it's like Quake in that sense, but then none of the main weapons, it's all just ammo and armor. None of the main weapons are weapons you choose. You just get those from the loadout. And there's a couple of special weapons, and they've got this like demon uh, spawn mode where you turn into a demon and you basically wreck people for a bit. Uh, it's not like Quake. It's not like Quake, because Quake was a highly skill-based game where the way you managed to map and control people's access to weapons made a huge difference to how well you could play that game. And I remember Doom, I remember Quake, sorry, Quake 2. One of the things I loved to play on Quake 2 was one versus one. It was, it was a huge part of Quake 2 because if you could manage and control a map as a single player, uh, and cock block another person from getting all the decent weapons on that map. You really understood and knew that level really well, and you had to have a high level of skill to make sure you kept killing that person and, yeah. and stopping them. There's nothing like that on this. This is just a kind of console style free for all where everybody will get some kills at some point. You know what I mean? No matter how bad they are. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the multiplayer. It, Meh, meh. If 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 you like that style of multiplayer, then it's got it's everything a bonus. going for it. Yeah, but yeah. other than that, it's just Don't, something to increase the longevity if, of the game. If if you come in expecting it to be like Quake or I, it's like usual fare. It really isn't. So. Well, I mean, interestingly, the um, Bethesda didn't create the multiplayer aspect of the game on their own. Uh, it was made uh, in correlation with certain Affinity, which mm -hmm. actually developed and created a lot of the maps for the multiplayer yeah. and they are a, a company that's mainly made up of um, ex-industry sort of games makers including uh, staff from Bungie 
and yeah. from a bunch of other different sort of game companies they've got together and they worked on games like the halo 2 maps uh they also worked on the call of duty world at war maps uh they helped sort of port games from pc to console yeah and they are the ones mainly responsible for the multiplayer portion of this game which i think is kind of interesting that it's made up of this creative team from lots of other creative teams yeah and i think that the multiplayer aspect of the game is interesting and it looks fun because it is just as quick paced as the first two doom games mm-hmm. uh and it is of course a jib fest there yeah. is a lots of be- lots of body parts exploding everywhere yeah yeah and you know the power-ups kind of makes it interesting but for those that are veteran players you're probably going to get your ass handed to you pretty quickly mm-hmm. so what is snap map so how this, does this work so yeah i'm just loading up snap map and this is so for instance this is a single player uh, map which is a tribute to episode one mission one of the original d wow so we're gonna have a little look around and this is meant to be a recreation a of recreation the original doom. using snap map of doom in its current form um i think they have the weird thing is, you come into Snap Map, it's like a separate game completely. You uh, you come into this, and then it's like, um, oh yeah, there, so there's there's the armor wow. that was always there. And then they so got, far, they've done a pretty oh, damn yeah, good job. Uh, and they spawned a bunch of stuff in. Yeah, so the, uh, what, one of the things that I have seen was um, like various different modes. You can do have all kinds of co-op modes, etc., for Snap Map. Uh, it seems to be quite powerful in terms of giving you like variation on being able to create different kinds of game modes and if you want to do any kind of com- uh, co-op combat or survival mode and stuff like that already there are maps made by the community that have got that for you but as you can see it's very different to the original level like in terms of its actual layout but and the way the monsters function, like the basic monsters are not so dangerous because they used to shoot at you, the original. With incredible accuracy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right from the off, whereas these just sort of lumber at you. But yeah, this so this is a tribute to episode one, uh, mission one, and you get a general, general gist of that somebody could do that sort of thing. I do think that this is a welcome bonus to the game, the fact that this sort of material is there. I don't know how moddable it's going to be i don't know how how many expansions this aspect of the game is actually going to get from the makers yeah uh, how how open it will be for you know for possibilities in order to keep this game going but this is definitely an interesting expansion for the game uh so i have to ask jeff because a game like this does sometimes feel to me like a one-trick pony and yeah. I don't want to offend any ga- any Doom fans, mm-hmm. but of course, without there being too much story, and with the game relying on its sort of over-the-top, fast-paced action, how yeah. h- how fun is it after eight hours of playing? Well, it's very intense, but this is the thing. Like, yes, it is a one-trick pony. There's no doubt about it, right? But what it has done is done that one trick i will say yeah it's highly polished and incredibly satisfying made made sure that that one trick is fucking awesome (laughs) yes um a bit like uh you know pretty much all the other games where it's been wow this is awesome like titanfall was like yeah okay it's a one trick pony you get in and out of big fucking walking robots but that one trick is fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and, yes. and, and it was like and the yeah, fluidity right, of can, the gameplay just yeah, kind of overrides anything else. You can uh, something to also uh, I'd be say about Destiny was that it had great gameplay but nothing else. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> the problem with Destiny was it was actually I don't know what my melee button is now. Uh, it, it, the, the problem with Destiny is you you know like it was trying not to be a one trick pony it was trying to be an all comprehensive looter shooter yeah but actually it was just a one trick pony whereas doom's committed it knows it's a one trick pony and it keeps it doesn't try to be ambitious to be something it isn't and then fail it just does what it wants to do exceedingly well so if i um you know like if i talk about that intro which was we've seen already you know like you you wake up 
you're very much straight away you've got a very short like little sequence to introduce you to the fact that you got woken up by these characters uh, and then it's like right here's the next room here's some armor here's the next room or, or you get a gun immediately the second you get up the next room is like yeah there's your armor boom the next room is there's a shotgun and, and then, then you're and compelled then it, to just <laughs> keep going and then it's like and then rip this thing out and then there's going to be loads of monsters come and then you've just got to survive those waves of monsters if you can and that is the that is that's it that you is know? Like, and it's like oh here here's a new monster it's fucking huge uh, aren't you scared and then you're like right okay you've managed to defeat that monster now how about if you have ten of them or how about if I chuck you three of those with three of those monsters and three of those monsters? Can you, can you handle it? You know, <laughs> can, like, how can you do? And and you know the the weapons are satisfying enough and the 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 gore is satisfying enough and everything is so well polished that that is highly enjoyable and you like doing the bigger and bigger challenges. Which is why it's easy for me to recommend the game for people that have perhaps not purchased it yet like myself it is on my to-do list to playlist most definitely yeah but for me personally it's not a day one purchase it's not it's not a full price purchase of a game mm -hmm. because i i personally feel that after about six to eight hours i would be done with it if i had not completed the campaign i'd might eat out the rest of it just to get to the end mm. um for replayability i don't know whether it would warrant a whole replay of the entire game so for me i i think that as you've said it does what it does great if you are into first person shooters most definitely if you're taking a break from first person shooters uh then yeah maybe wait until it's a little bit cheaper more affordable uh jeff do you recommend the game at full price i absolutely recommend this game at whatever price you manage to get it um like for instance now i've loaded up an onslaught this is kind of a bit like a tower defense and uh, if you've played call of duty black ops zombies you'll recognize this sort of thing where you can come in and buy upgrades and stuff like that so as far as the amount of content if you like first person shooters right you will fucking like doom like there's no two ways about it if you're a big fan of first person shooters and, and you're not just locked into the modern warfare thing then yeah you will absolutely find this highly entertaining and if you are sick of just you know cover based shooters where you gotta hide behind a wall poke out shoot something bang, wait for bang, your health to regenerate yeah bang bang it's dead if what you're really looking for is you know a shooter where you've got to keep on the move you know like there is no cover you just like your whether or not your survive is based around how well you can navigate and jump and run your way around the map and you've got to be able to kind of take aware of your surroundings and be able to like kind of move with almost like a prescience of knowing what's behind you and not bump into things and not get flanked and that sort of thing this is it this is the definitive version of any kind of shooter that you would want to, to play that you know like high praise yeah high yeah, praise yeah it's the, it is the best one uh, at the moment i would say excellent it, okay. it looks beautiful and it's got gore for days <laughs> gore for days well i cannot argue with that because the the gore kills and the gore effects in the game are are brilliant the only one criticism i have really with the gore kills is that so much brightly covered neon ammunition and upgrades and things come pouring out of all of the bosses which kind of <laughs> takes away from the grotesque nature of watching their innards get removed <laughs> for me personally it kind of cartoonizes and does it kind of takes something away from the gore when i see ammo pouches flying everywhere yeah well this, this isn't a game which takes itself too seriously of course not of course not no but i mean you know we're seeing the damage here i'd, I'd just rather see the blood squibs instead of 40s and 80s bouncing well, everywhere this is this is just on the snap map. of course of course yeah. this is a snap map level in which we're basically playing tower defense like these guys aren't attacking me i've just got to stop them from getting to that point there indeed and uh, yeah we can play co-op so yeah I mean, well co-op feature is always an added bonus that's yeah, absolutely another selling point that's it there's a co-op survival mode as well which i haven't tried yet but i'll definitely be doing that and yeah there's, there's enough here there's enough content or there will be once the community's created it 
to keep you interested for quite some time. And yeah, some of these mechanics just never get old. Never, I, evidently. I, I gotta <laughs> say, the glory kills, they work as well. The, the animation's done quick enough that you can, you know, just pull them off and they don't interrupt the flow of the game. They do feel like a part of the game. So, yeah, it's... Uh, Yes, it is cartoony gore, but you know, I think if it tried to take itself too seriously, people would be hating on it for that. You know, I think it it, it strikes a note and it holds it, yeah, and it, it gets it pitch perfect. Fantastic. Well, that's going to be it from uh, from us here at Off the Shelf Reviews this week. We'll be back next Friday with another video game, of course, film reviews on Thursdays. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, and Patreon. Take it easy, everyone. See you next time. Take it easy.